fashion accessories and trims. This is unit 5 of the course which deals with jewellery and fashion. This unit introduces us to the wondrous world of jewellery that is not only worn in the western world but also in India. Through the course of this unit we will examine the semiotics and the language of jewellery and its relationship to the human body. In this module 2 of the unit, we will talk about jewellery that is worn on the head, hair and the face. Jewellery is a form of adornment that could be worn as a personal, social, cultural or religious marker. While the entire human body can be adorned with ornaments, pieces that are worn on the head and face are special. In this module, we will discuss jewellery that is worn on the head, hair, face and on the ears. We will recollect our knowledge of western head and hair ornaments, crown, tiara and diadems from unit 3 and augment it with the knowledge of eastern headpieces. We will discuss traditional Indian accessories used on the head and hair embellishments. We will list the various kinds of earrings and nose rings that are available. Jewellery for the head and the face. In the past, headdresses have been worn by both genders. Fabrics, metal chains, shells, gemstones, coins, flowers, sticks and feathers have been traditionally worn in the hair and on the head. Throughout history, the ornaments worn on the head, hair and face indicated religious significance, social class, age group and the aesthetic ideals of the community. To give you a recent example, the movie Padmavat clearly differentiates between religions, cultures and genders using not just clothing but also hair accessories. The Bhorle of Padmavati, the Sarpej of Maharaval Ratan Singh, to the Crown of Kilji and the Central Asian headwear of Mehronisa show the extent of differences in materials, shapes and colors used in headdress that is one category of ornament in neighboring countries within the same time period. In this module, we are going to discuss a lot of interesting ornaments that were either worn in the past and those that are continued to be worn even today with or without modifications. Here is a list of jewellery items that are or can be worn on the head, hair, ear and on the face. Head and hair. The first category includes tiaras, crowns, diadems and wreaths. The second category includes pins, clips, hair bands, decorative combs, hair beads and ties. The third category is almost like an amalgamation of these two and include complex head pieces, sets of ornaments including forehead and back of the hair ornaments. In this category, we will be looking at some fascinating Indian traditional jewellery like the Chudamani, Nagapadam, Poochada and Kunjalam. If you now take the face, there are several ornaments that can be worn like Bindi, nose rings and septum rings, earrings, ear chain, ear cuff, face chain, piercings, cages and yes face masks. Jewellery worn on the head and hair. In module 1 and 2 of unit 3, that is accessories for the head and neck of this course, we have covered some of these topics. Module 1, we have discussed tiaras, 
crowns, wreaths and diadems. Along with traditional items of headwear like the Native American war bonnet. In the later, that is unit 2, we have listed various hair accessories like hairpins, crocodile clips, butterfly clips, barrettes, hair ties, hair bands and so on. As a continuation, in this unit, I am going to introduce to you some complex and exotic headpieces worn across the world and of course traditional Indian jewellery that is worn on the head. Exotic traditional headdresses From the golden headdress of Queen Puabi to Cleopatra's gold hairband that held her goddess wig from Stephanos and the Paul Stemma of Emperor Justinian and Empress Theodora, there is no dearth of exotic headwear in the world. Russian women have worn arched headdresses known as Kokushnik from 16th century. In Brittany, France, women wear an intricate lace headdress known as the coif. It is worn as a part of folk costumes. In this module, as I mentioned before, our focus is not on Western headdresses or Western jewelry, but we move slightly towards Africa, Middle East, and yes, the Far East, including India. Complex headdresses have been a part of African and Asian heritage for centuries. From Africa and Middle East to Far East, including Central and South Asia, there is a strong presence of ceremonial headdresses. In the prehistoric times, tubular ornaments were worn around a thick lock of hair in Iran and Central Asia. In the 19th and 20th centuries, brides living in the Hebron hills of southern Palestine wore beautiful and costly headdresses encrusted with coins called the Ukhayat al-Darahim, which literally means the money hat. The headdress displayed the pride and the status of the family. And naturally, it was passed down the generations with coins or trinkets like the hand of Hamsa being added by each generation. The front of the headdress is decorated with rows of amuletic coral and turquoise blue beads and a fringe of silver alloy chains and ending in charms like coins or the hand of Hamsa. This is worn to ward off the eye of envy or the evil eye. Coral beads in such headdresses are believed to banish poverty. Until the 20th century, the Uled nail exotic dancers of Algeria wore brightly colored clothing, necklace of coins, numerous pendants, heavy silver gold bracelets, white belt and a heavy headdress of layers of chains. Look, imagine what a beautiful picture they would have made. The Berber women of Morocco were elaborate headdress of chains and coins that framed the face. They also were pointed shrine-like boxes of perfumed resin, triangular shaped fibula known as the tesseris. These frame their face and their shoulder. Along with large crescent shaped earrings, these are usually attached to the sides of the diadem completing their exotic headdress. Now moving on towards the Far East. As early as the Han dynasty, say about 206 BC, kingfisher feathers and iridescent ultramarine to turquoise blue featured in hair ornaments. These feathers were highly valued and they denoted status, wealth and royalty. In the Ming dynasty, Fengguan, that is phoenix crowns with motifs of kingfisher feathers, dragons, phoenixes, peasants was worn. The Manchu women of the Qing dynasty were known, uh, known as women with golden head and natural feet due to the ornate Manchu headdress that they used to wear. 
the material culture of the Chinese boasts of ornate hair combs, clips, pins, in addition to larger crown-like pieces. From the late 8th to the 10th century, it was fashionable for Chinese women to wear decorated combs as a part of their coiffer. Comb tops and handles were made of such precious materials such as gold, silver, jade, mother of pearl and they were ornamented with beautiful decorative motifs. Aghache or dhari was a large wig which originated in northern Korea. It was decorated with ornate hair sticks called bineo and it had silk tassels and silver charms encrusted with gemstones. The traditional Japanese geisha headdress is elaborate. Their hair would be typically ornamented with kansashi of combs, pins, tortoiseshell elements and flowers. Moving much closer to home, the Sinhalese women of Sri Lanka wore kondakura, silver gilted nib shaped pins with gemstone like focus, very similar to Chinese pins. And the Tamil Sri Lankan women wore more corkscrew style pins in their hair buns. While the Thai people wore tall pointed crowns like Chada and Monghot, the Burmese were Mahagaik and the Cambodians were Mukhot during their traditional dance performances even today. These pointed crowns symbolize the Chatha Mukhutha or the matted hair of an aesthetic as found in the iconography of Lord Shiva and Lord Avalokiteshvara. Now it is time for us to focus on traditional Indian jewellery worn on the head, forehead and hair. There is a multitude of head, forehead and hair jewellery worn in India and differs from region to region, from state to state and sometimes even within communities in the same state. In some cases, the same or a similar object may be called by different names in different languages. In case of others, regional and cultural differences goes beyond just the name and impacts the material, color, size and the motives used. One of the major differences that I want you to note before we proceed is the choice of metal. It has been my observation that while in the plains people prefer gold, those living in the hilly areas, particularly those of Himachal Pradesh, prefer silver. You can also see an influence of Central Asian headdresses in the regions of Kashmir and Himachal Pradesh. Whereas on the eastern side you can see influence of jewellery that is being worn in our neighbouring countries like Nepal, Tibet and Burma. Now let us go on and look at some of these fascinating names and what they mean. I would like to start with traditional ancient ornaments and slowly move on to those that have been worn even today. Now let us classify these hair ornaments or head ornaments by the way in which they are worn. Firstly, let us take a look at ornaments that are worn on the top and front of the head and hair. The first ornament that probably comes to your mind when I say headdress in India would be a krita or a mukutha. Krita, kridam, mukut, mukutha are all crowns typically made of gold and encrusted with precious stones. While this practice of wearing crowns is almost obsolete today with only the royalty wearing it during ceremonial occasions, there are different tribal communities in India that still incorporate smaller, simpler crowns as a part of their cultural celebrations. 
The Khasi hill tribes wear round silver crowns with pointed spears during the spring non-crim festive dance. Bengali brides and grooms wear mukhut and topor made up of shola pith during their wedding. The Kashmiri topi of women has protective amulets of gilt stitched onto it. From the hat hang side ornaments that are very similar to the Central Asian headdress charms. Sarpich Sarpich is a turban ornament worn by both Hindu noblemen and princes and Nizams in India in the past. The vertical jigha portion is often styled like a feather or a flower and is sometimes underlined by a sarpati worn horizontally beneath. An aigret in, on similar lines is a hair ornament designed to hold or depict feathers and is usually gem encrusted. During the Mughal era, the practice of wearing an aigret came to India and it was attached along with the sarpich in order to create an even more fascinating looking head ornament. Such an aigret would be used to display a feather of a heron or an agate. Next, we come to the hair ornament that many of us know and love, the tikka. Known by several names such as chiri tikka, mang tikka, tikka, tikli, chutti or neti chutti. Tikka refers to a drop or a droplet like form. The ornament is typically a teardrop elongated in one direction. Wherein? The focal is attached to an adorned or a plain flat chain at one end and or a hook or a ring at the other. The chain could be studded with stones or it could simply be a strand of beads including pearls. It is worn at the central parting of the hair where kumkum or sindoor is also worn by married women. While traditionally the focal falls to the center of the forehead it is also worn high up the hairline. While focals of most regions are flat, the bhorlas and the rakris of Rajasthan are spherical, resembling the jujube fruit. While most tikhas and matapatti are made up of gold, there are silver versions too. The chiri tikha of Himachal Pradesh is said to resemble a bird that is flying. It is made in silver with blue and green champlev enamelling. The Dawani Thilak of Mandi, Himachal Pradesh looks like a matapati, but it is in silver with a center strap much thinner than the side ornaments and the focal is set with coral and turquoise. That brings us to the famous Indian matapati. It is another forehead ornament similar to the tikha in addition to the central chain and the focal this style also has chains rows of stones or strands of beads that envelop the front of the head it is secured in place by fastening the three ends of the piece using cord at the back of the head talai saman literally meaning items worn on the head this is a South Indian ornament consisting of a neti pattai, which is very similar to the matapati of the north and two focals, Suryan that is sun and Chandrapirai crescent moon. They represent dichotomies in nature and therefore they also pinpoint to balance that a woman must follow in her life. Talai Saman today is worn by brides and mostly by Bharatanatyam dancers. Thaira. This is a variation of the Matapati with strips of metal, beads or chains framing and wrapping the entire top of the head as these chains move in different directions radiating 
from a focal that is on the forehead. It is more complex than your typical Mata Patti. Simpler Tairas are worn by Bengali brides even today and they hold the thin Gozamo veils or the Dupatta of the bride. Shinka A Shinka is a heavy chain based ornament that is worn on the hair and is held in place by gold hooks that are attached to the hair. These are a set of chains that are held in place by focals like peacocks at intermittent points throughout the circumference of the head or at least on the front side of the head. Jhumar and Phasa A Jhumar is a flat hair or head ornament worn on the side of the head by braids and also by dancers. It is chandelier shaped, could be reversible and hangs from a hook. Combs in Indian headdress are much simpler than their Chinese counterparts. They can be worn both on the top of the head and at the back of the head. The Santal tribes of Bihar wear wooden combs called the Kungi. Silver combs of the same name are also worn in Goa, but these look drastically different from their Santal versions. These have four to five metal pins below a floral focal, which is very similar to European hair brooches or hair combs. In Tamil Nadu, a very similar looking ornament is called Kodi Mullai or flowers on a creeper and it is used to adorn the plates. Ornaments worn on the back of the head and on the hair. Chuck Chucks are heavy silver ornaments that are used on the hair plate at the back of the head to tie hair. Chudamani or Rakudi A Vedic ornament that is still in use. A Rakudi is worn to protect the crown of the head. It is circular in shape in the form of a full bloomed flower or the resplendent sun. It is usually adorned with chem stones in colors like red and green along with clear white stones and pearls. The precious version has rubies, emeralds, diamonds and pearls that is encrusted in it. Kopa Kopa is a hair net for the hair bun, much like the Greek hair nets. Jhadanagam The Jhadanagam, which literally means hair serpent, is a hair plate ornament that starts at the top of the head with the many-headed divine cobra Anantha and its three coils. It can be followed by a decorative covering of real Tharambu flowers or the jewel encrusted version of it from the start to the tip of the plate. Veni Veni is a crescent moon shaped ornament that is worn high up on the head. In some regions of India, Veni is a comb-like ornament that is almost like a U that is flattened and it is worn on a hair bun. In other places, it is simply made up of flowers and surrounds a low bun or a plate at the nape of the neck. Jadabille Small ornaments that are used to decorate the hair bun or the plate are known as jadabille. Bille can be round or shaped like a teardrop. They can have a plain back that is fastened by tying it at the sides or it can have a screw attachment at the back. The Tirgapu of Tamil Nadu and the Firkiche Fool of Karnataka have screws at the back. Poojada or Pulajada This is a decorative braid covering made up of flowers that starts at the top of the head and goes on till the tip of the plate. In addition to having real flowers, yarn and thread ornaments, these covers also include billies or focals that are made up of metals and are gem encrusted. Kunjum, Kunjalam and Parande 
These are tassels made up of fabric or thread and are attached to the end of the braid to keep it straight. This is also said to induce the growth of long hair. The Sita Marhi of Bihar is a set of silver tassels that are worn on the braid. But unlike the other tassels that we discussed before, these are worn probably at the top or middle of the braid and not necessarily at the end of the braid. With this, we come to the end of the list of traditional Indian ornaments that are worn on the head and the hair. Now let us move on to the jewellery that is worn on the face and around it in India and across the world. Let us begin by looking at some macabre pieces of face cage jewellery or face mask jewellery. While said to be macabre in terms of aesthetics, these are actually created using thin chains to resemble lightweight armor. They cover most of the face, excluding eyes, nostrils and the mouth. But then there are also cages that cover precisely these areas. Covers or cages that cover the mouth are very famous. Face masks. Masks can be worn to cover the entire face or just a portion of the face like the area surrounding the eyes. Venetian gold masks and masquerade masks are truly spectacular works of art when it comes to mask design. Bindi and Tika. Now, Bindi is an ornament that is very strongly related to Indian aesthetics. While a tika refers to a teardrop form of the bindi, the word bindi refers to bindu or a round dot worn at the center of the forehead. The next major ornament that is worn on the face is the nose ring or the nose pin. Now, let us look at why and how people wear nose rings across the world. From the Alaskan tribes to the Australian Aborigines, from the Aztecs and the Mayans and Incas to the people of Africa and Middle Eastern countries, nose piercing has been one of the oldest body adornment practices in the world. Now what is nose piercing? Nose piercing is the practice of piercing one or both nostrils, the septum, the nasal bridge, nasalang, or even the tip of the nose. The term nose ring is an umbrella term and refers to jewelry that is worn in nostril piercings. It includes items like nostril screws, studs, hoops, stud jackets, septum and bridge jewelry include septum tusks, septum rings, horseshoe shaped pinchers, hoops and barbells. Straight barbells are preferred style of nose rings for nasalang piercings which go through two nostrils and one septum piercing. The nose is a delicate area that is vital for our existence. Hence, nose rings should always be hypoallergenic. The best metals for nose ornaments are niobium, titanium, gold, platinum or palladium. The silver is commonly worn. It is best worn after the piercing is fully healed so that the oxidation does not cause any allergic reaction in the wound. Today, a variety of plastic materials are also worn as nose rings. Speaking about safe metals that you can wear at your piercing, I have mentioned the word niobium. Niobium is not only a hypoallergenic metal, which means that it does not cause you allergies, but it is also very fun to make and jewelry with and also wear it. You can see here a pair of anodized niobium earrings. Notice how the metal shimmers in two different colors. That is because the same piece of metal 
can be anodized to create different color effects within the same piece. Not only that, you also get to anodize niobium wire, which means that your ear hooks do not have to be the same old gold, copper, pewter or brass, but they can also be in several colors that match your dangles or your beads. In the past, while some Native American cultures believed in piercing the septum as a rite of passage, Australian Aboriginals used it to enhance their physical appearance. Wearing a nose ring has been a tradition in most Indian communities. The piercing done just before the girl attained puberty or got married. It is believed that the piercing of the left nostril makes childbirth easier as this pressure point is connected with a woman's reproductive organs. Dancers across the world wear nose strings to regulate their breathing while dancing. Fool, Nath, Nathani, Mukutti, Besari and Bulak are some Indian nose ornaments. Even though pictures of Hindu goddesses and photographs and paintings of nymphs are shown wearing nose strings. There is no evidence that Indian women wore them before the 16th century when it was popularized by the Middle Eastern tribes. But it was only in, during the 1960s, during the hippie movement that nose strings became popular in the West. Then, in the 1970s and 1980s, punk rockers and goths adapted nose strings as a symbol of rebellion against the conservative values and a physical declaration of personal independence. Today, wearing a nose string is a choice. It could brand you as traditional or fiercely independent depending on where you come from and the type of person you are. Now let us look at types of nose ornaments including nose strings. The first and the most commonly known nose ornament is the stud. The nose stud is usually a straight bone or a rod that is basic style and it is used during piercing. It has a stud at one end which can be a solid shape and a screw or a stopper at the other end. It is a two-piece ornament. You can get several designs ranging from classical domes to animal figurines and creative shapes like umbrella or a cartoon character. It can be set with gemstones as well. The Indian mukhapattu, that is a stud with a single stone, full flower-shaped designs with stones or mukutti fall into this category. This style suits almost all face types, but the size of the stud should be determined by your nose size. Screws. These look more like a screw or a hook. Basically, they are a half nose stud and a half hoop or a ring. Attached to the end of the bone of the stud is a half hook that wraps around. The circular barbells or the nut worn by Maharashtrian women is a variation of this design and it gives a very traditional, classical look to one's face. It is perfect for a round face as it makes the face look slim. Besar is a large nose ring ornamented with stones, pearls and enamel and it's worn by a lot of tribal communities in India. The next category of nose rings is that of rings. The most common type of nose ring worn today is the segment ring. They can be plain metal or beaded rings. Though plain rings suit all face types, the beaded rings best suit a long face or a long nose. Almost all Indian nuts including the large Mahandi Bhalu Nath also comes under this category. Indian bridal nose rings include beaded or metal chains 
that extend till the here. It can be plain or have dangles as well. And this no string chain support is there so that you can wear heavy no strings as well which cannot be supported by your nose alone. Septum rings. Rings that are worn at the septum can be plain or with a dangle. The Nepali and the Indian version of the septum ring is known as the bullak or bulak or bulak. The next category of nose pins are clip-ons. As the name suggests, these are clip-ons or press studs that do not require a piercing and can be worn by anybody who just wants to try the look for a day. Stone jackets. These are ornaments or jeweled jackets that are stone studded bases or enhancers with a hole and can be worn stacked with a nose string or earring. Jackets for nose strings are called basery and can either be worn with a small stud in the center or as it is if a tube that is a stud is attached at the back. Eight stone diamond baseries are very common and popular in South India. Now not all of us might wear no strings but then there is one ornament that is universally favored to be worn on the face. Yes, earrings. For centuries, earrings have been worn all over the world. From ancient Greeks, Minoans, Romans to Persians, from Egyptians to Asians, both men and women have used and still continue to wear various styles of earrings to adorn themselves. Members of several communities elongate the ear loops by adding discs of weight to their ears. Now, much like nose piercings that can be done not just on the nostrils, ear piercing need not be done only on the lobes. Ear piercing apart from the lobule can also be done on the fossa, helix, scapha, anti-helix, anti-tragus, tragus and concha. There are ornaments that wrap the ear lobe without piercing like ear cuffs, while some ear cuffs like the Indian Nagula serpent must be screwed through a series of holes at the perimeter of the ear. Types of earrings. Earrings come in many different types. Studs, hoops, danglers, chandeliers and clip-on. Studs and hoops typically have a backing made of metal or plastic to hold the earring in place. While danglers will hook into the hole and hang without a backing. Sling backs or fold backs are danglers which will have clasps that snap into place. Chandeliers and discs can be studs or danglers. Now let us take a look at some of these styles. We will begin with the most common earring that is worn across the world, the stud. A stud is a flat back earring that is worn close to the earlobe. They have a post attached to them. Dome studs with flat backs can also be called as buttons. Completely spherical ones are ball earrings. Studs could be clusters too, where gemstones or beads are arranged in a composite form or cluster. Hook earrings. These are earrings that hang on a wire hook, which have the shape of a question mark or its variation like a kidney wire. Now screw unlike the other two, do not refer to the earring as such, but it refers to the stopper of the stud, which is a screw-on. The post of such studs will have screw thread on them. Screws can be closed at the back or open. Drop In 
a drop earring, a bead or a charm or sometimes a combination is suspended by a chain or a wire from a post or a hook. Dangle. These are earrings that dangle below the earlobe. Bar. Rectangular stud earrings that may or may not drop below the end of earlobes. Chandelier. Elaborate earrings that dangle from the post or hook like a mini chandelier. Clip-on earrings. These earrings are attached to the earlobe by way of a hinged clip on the rear of the earring. Some clips may have additional screws at the back. Hoop. These are metal tube earrings or flat earrings in the shape of a circle. Half circle hoop earrings look like the letter C. A creole or a shrimp earring is a hoop earring that is wider at the bottom than at the top. Hinged earrings. These are earrings that spread apart at the hinge, the bottom, and then snap back into place with a snap closure. Huggies. Huggies are hinged earrings that hug the ear and almost completely hide the earring post. Latchback. Latchback is a hinged backing, usually on hoops or studs where the post goes through. Threaders. A threader is a long metal chain thread that goes through the pierced ear with a blunt needle-like object at the end. Magnetic earrings. These resemble stud earrings but can be worn without piercing. The front and back portion of the earring are held in place by small magnets on either side that are embedded inside the components of the earrings. Stick on earrings. These are stickers that can be stuck on the earlobe to look like stud earrings. Ear screws. Screwed onto the lobe, these allow for exact adjustment. They are an alternative for those who find clip-ons too painful. Ear pin or ear trim. This is a curved piece of ear jewellery with a post on one end and a wire clip at the back on the other end and can be worn on both pierced and non-pierced ears. In a pierced ear, the earring is worn like a stud and the clip is fixed on the top of the ear. In a non-pierced ear, the post goes on to the top of the ear where it is simply affixed to the hair and the bottom portion holds the earring in place. Though it can be worn by people who do not have piercings, it is not recommended as it might fall down and you might lose it easily. Ear cuffs. Ear cuffs wrap around the outer cartilage similar to conch piercings and may be chained to the lobe as a piercing.
looked at different yarning styles, types of closures that can be used in earrings across the world. Now let us focus on some traditional Indian styles that also use some of the styles that we talked about. Indian earrings. Evidence suggests that earrings were worn since the Harappan period in India. Several techniques of metal casting, granulation, filigree work and enameling were added over time to create not just earrings but also different types of jewellery. With trade and political relations in Middle East, Persia, Greek and Rome, these influences came to reflect in Indian earrings as well. The traditional practice of Karnaveda involves ritualistic piercing of ears in order to open one's ears to the sacred sounds of the universe. Earrings, that is Karnam or Bhala in traditional India were spectacular. The following are some traditional styles. While not all of them are worn today, variations of some are still worn as ethnic jewellery across the country. Karnika Karnika is one of the oldest Indian jewelries that refers to trumpet shaped earrings. These could also be made to look like a fish. Karnaful or Kanful These are earrings with flower bud like shape either facing upwards or downward. In the later ages, Karnika and Karnaful seem to merge together and become one. Kanaka Kamala A Kanaka Kamala is a full blown lotus design. Variations include a full bloom lotus at the top and a downward facing bud at the bottom. Kundala You must have heard of the famous character Karna from Mahabharata who was said to be born with a Khavasa and a Kundala. So what is this Kundala? A Kundala is a ring, coil or a hoop style earring. Which brings us to Dehri. Dehri is a circular disc earring. Now it could be a full disc or with a smaller hole in the center. Variations today include teardrop earrings that are flat discs. Talapatra. Talapatra is a very interesting organic earring where a small strip of palm leaf is rolled and inserted into the lobe. Later, the shape was made from ivory or gold started with gemstones. Today, it can be seen in a lot of tribal communities. Akota. Round, real like earrings worn in Gujarat with sideways spokes at the bottom. It requires enlarged ear hole to be worn. Kundal and Pokanu are similar styles. They are all said to have emerged from the Talapatra of the ear. Kadikkan. These are small stone studs worn typically by men. Lolak. Just like Kadukan was reserved for men, Lolak is a pair of dangler earrings reserved for women. Tandati and Pambram. Tandati is a pair of large earrings made up of abstract composition of metal cubes and spears. These elements are said to represent the cosmos or the three worlds, the terrestrial, astral and the divine. They are worn in distended ear lobes. These forms are hollow and filled with luck. Similar dumbbell like rounds along with hoops are called kadole. Jumka, Jumki and Jimiki. Jumka is a bell shaped earring that could resemble a downward facing basket or a lotus flower. It is the most popular earring in India and has several variations both in shape as well as in material. 
the carnival jumka is a combination of heavy stud earrings that are gem encrusted along with a smaller jumka chand bali or funkia crescent moon style earrings that are studded with stones or enamel are called chand bali funkia are fan shaped earrings that can also look like a chand bali but they are much smaller compared to the typical chand bali sui daga these are the threader style of earrings that we discussed before in types of earrings dejhar worn by the kashmiri pandit women it comprises of a thin gold chain that passes through the hole at the center of the ear scarf the ends are joined with a gold focal dejharu rombin in the ghameri village in arunachal pradesh women wear ear plugs in silver called the rombin phandi and loria these are ornaments once suspended from the top of the ears by women in gujarat and rajasthan respectively they could be typically made of silver though gold versions also seem to exist in the modern day jewelry stores ananta muduche nagalai or again lorian while the names seem to repeat these ornaments are slightly different from the ones explained above these are styles of earrings that hang from the loop and not the top of the ear with a loop and a big pendant finally i would like to introduce to you several small earrings worn by nizam women tinke butte and chaukare worn on different parts of the ear together they comprise the ear ornamentation of not just a nizam woman but also muslim women from several communities today ear chains ear chains are worn to support the ear while wearing heavy earrings while some just attach to the hair in the front some go over the ear to the back of the earring while others like the kashmiri dur are attached to the top of the head or sometimes even to the back of the head they are known by different names martel in the south and sankali in the north are two of the most common now let me offer you a sneak peek into my jewelry box and show you some of my beloved hair accessories and ornaments over here you can see some of my rakudi or chudamani what really is special about the rakudi is that there is this loop at the back enabling you to just put in a strand of hair inside and then put it right up your crown these are some wooden combs that are worn by women in india even today maybe not on the hair but at least as pendants or brooches or as even functional combs they are used as a part of hair ornamentation moving on i would like to show you a typical tamar talai saman now earlier i had spoken to you about the talai saman either having only the neti chutti or the neti chutti with the neti patai that is a very similar uh, strap encrusted with jewels that also continues on the side these are the two famed suryan and chandran focals that depict balance a typical arrangement like this will be followed through at the back and a rakudi in this case a smaller rakudi would be placed at the back of the head now this would be continued by the use of tarambu or flowers or even gem encrusted jadabil like throughout the plate ending in a kunjalam as opposed to this i have a very petite neti chutti over here which is just a pendant with a small but thick strip of stones 
Now this is very rigid as compared to the Thalai Saman that I have previously shown you. A Neti Chuti like this is intended for young girls who do not want a very dressy appearance. Typically, a Neti Chuti like this is worn in combination with earrings that have very similar model. In India, we have a very strong culture of matching accessories where either the earring is matched with a necklace or other ornaments match with each other apart from coordinating with the garment that is being worn. Now, let's go from south to the north of India and northwestern India. Here, I would like to show you one traditional hair ornament and two contemporary DIY versions of hair ornaments that are worn in these regions. The first one is your borla or your rakri which is worn by Rajasthani women. Unlike the tikas that we saw before, you can see that it is three-dimensional in shape. It is usually tied on the head using a black thread such as this, which renders it almost invisible. But to cover up the thread, the dupatta is worn on the top with the ghota patti border covering up till this point. The other two accessories that I have here are made up of silk thread, gota, pom-pom and other materials that have been trendy in the contemporary market for a while now. This is a gota mang tika which is made using gota patti and pom-pom along with pearls. This can be typically worn at a pre-wedding function. This accessory on the other hand is a hybrid version. So in talking about ear chains, I had mentioned a type of ear chain or a ear support where the ear chain goes from the earring to the back where it's fastened using a clip. This is one such item. Here you can see that the ear chain is not connected to the stud but to the jumka. When the earrings are worn, the stud keeps the jhumka and the ear chain in place. The whole thing is connected to a clip, which because this is a DIY version, has a barret at the back. This ornament that I have right here is a hybrid version. When I was talking about ear chains, I had mentioned that there is a variety in which the ear chain goes not just above the ears, but to the back of the head where it's fastened using a clip. This is one such item. Here you can notice that the ear chain is connected to the jhumka rather than the stud which is usually the norm. The ear chain connects to both the jhumka as well as to the clip which is worn at the back of the head. Though it looks like a floppy arrangement right now, when the jhumka is worn along with a stud, typically a full type of stud, it holds the arrangement in place and it looks very, very graceful. Cut. Up until now, I've shown you hair ornaments that range from being conservatively Indian to contemporary and modern. But when I talk about Indian jewellery, I cannot ignore the biggest influence that we have. Yes, European influence. Here I have for you two very interesting hair ornaments. This is a hair comb that has a very contemporary pendant, but one that is inspired by the Art Nouveau period. Can you identify the vines and the sinuous curves along with the whiplash? Here is another very interesting modern take or rather I should say an European take on an Indian accessory. Can you guess how and where this is worn? It is worn on the back of the head at the hair bun. Can you see this little ring over here? This 
can be attached to the hair bun using a U pin or a bobby pin and it hangs like this when worn. When going through the section on traditional Indian accessories, you might have wondered what is the point in learning about say Dehri or Talapatra or Kundala if we are not really going to be wearing these accessories today. That is where you are wrong. And to prove this to you, I am going to let you take another sneak peek into my jewellery box. This time we are going to look at a series of earrings. Now I would like you to see if you can identify what would be the predecessors of these earrings or the influences that were instrumental in crafting them. We learnt about Chandbali in the mornings. Are you able to identify that? You can see that the Chandbali over here instead of being jewel encrusted is decorated with meenakhari or enamel work. To your extreme left you can also see some ring like earrings. Do you know what they could be? We just discussed a type of earring called dehri which is a disc earring. Several versions of that have been created through the ages. Here you can find some of them. This is a flat disc that is created using metal laser cutting today. But I imagine in the days of the year that the same pair of earrings could be created using metal sheet cutting or even better filigree or tarkashi work. The pair over here is made up of pole key buttons. This is another fantastic use of fashion trims and how they can be converted into pieces of desirable jewellery. The earring over here is, I would like to call it as a complex pair. Why? It comprises of two different styles of earrings. The rectangle bar with the post at the top and a circular disc dehri at the bottom. The combination of this makes it very modern. So I would like to use this as an example to tell you how earrings have variated and yet remained in our wardrobes for not just decades but also centuries. I would like to bring your attention to a pair over here. This was made at Shantiniketan by weavers who wove reed and grass to make a pair of open lace work earrings. In our discussion we also came across fool or studs. Studs are the simplest of earrings and this particular stud looks like probably what your grandmother would wear comes with a screw back. Traditional earrings are often worn by older women with ear chain. When we looked at head accessories, I showed you a type of ear chain that connects the jumka to the hair clip. This was also a version that we looked at when we were discussing matching earrings that go along with the neti chutti. A model such as this is very stiff and it intends to be clipped to the top of the ear. This on the other hand is another kind of a martel where the hook is slightly longer and it attaches to the side of the ear or to the hair. You can notice from this part that this is also a part of the set along with the tale saman, the rakudi and probably necklaces and bangles and even my ring that, that is worn as a part of the set in your traditional South Indian attire. Finally, let's take a look at hoop earrings which have been in trend for quite some time now. If you guess that they originated from the Kundala, you are right. While Kundala is typically 
a more three-dimensional version of a hoop earring, which could have probably been hollow. Modern hoop earrings are thinner, lighter, and yes, could be ornamented in a variety of ways. Large metal hoop earrings are very chic and can easily go from day to night. I cannot really discuss earrings without discussing the quintessential Indian Jumka. Jumka or Jumki, yes, the pair that I am wearing is something of a traditional Indian standard. This particular one right here in Tamil Nadu is referred to as Koda Jimiki. A typically metal, tiered, downturned basket like earrings are your traditional framework for a jumka. But that doesn't mean other forms do not exist. This particular one right here is a contemporary variation of a jumka in polymer clay. It looks like a full bloom flower but turned upside down. A jumka does not have to be typically a same kind of a shape ornamented with just pearls and stones. This particular pair right here are Electra beetle jumkas where the canopy like structure is embellished by beetle wings. From jumka I would like to once again turn your attention to few other types of studs. Now this is a kind of stud that can be only worn at the lobule. It can be worn as it is or in connection with a pearl or a stole jumka. This kind of stud on the other hand is more versatile. Apart from being worn at the lobule along with a jumka or a dangle through this hole right here, it can also be worn high up on the ear. It could be worn at the helix or at the anti-tragus, depending on the look that you like to portray. If you look at the back of this pair, you would see that it also comes with a screw back. But this is very different from the gold earring I showed you before. Here, the screw is of an open back and hence the thread on the post is visible. I'll show you some basic earring styles and not so basic versions of these as beautiful earrings. Firstly, which are the styles that you can identify? The typical stud over here, which is worn by way of a post. And then you have a stud with a dangler. Any charm, bead or pendant or component that hangs from a stud where a loop is known as a dangler. When you have a bead or a charm or a combination of two suspended by a thin chain or a rope from a hoop or a stud, it is known as drop earrings. These are your typical hoops with a hatchback sort of a closure, also called as latchback. This is a closure that allows the back portion or rather the front portion which is a stud to go through the back portion which is your closure. This gorgeous pair of earrings right here is known as chandelier. Doesn't it look beautiful like a chandelier from which there are several bead drops hanging? Best worn as a neck gracer with evening wear or party attire. Chandeliers are symbols of elegance, grace and yes, financial status. Moving on to statement earrings. There is nothing more spectacular than a long neck gracer. Neck gracer refers to a style of earring 
which is long enough to just grace your neck. Neck graces can be tassels, can be chain earrings or more rigid structures such as this one. This pair right here is once again a combination earring. The piece on the right is a bar or a rectangle earring that simply works as a stud. The piece on the left is a ear trim where there is a stud on one side and a hoop or a loop on the other. This loop fixes on either to the top or bottom portion of your ear depending on whether you are pierced or non-pierced. Talking about mismatched earrings, I would like to point you to this statement pair here. In this pair of earrings, the central bead differs in colour from one piece to another. No, they are not two different earrings, but they belong to the same pair. You can notice that while the colour of the bead changes, the shape and the dangle that comes down from it are all very similar to each other making this a great example of mix mismatched earrings. This brings us to the topic of statement earrings. I would like to bring your attention to the pair that screams no. When seen separately, they might look like different earrings. Earrings that do not simply make sense or just novelty earrings made using scrabble tiles. But when worn together, they deliver a powerful message. No. Now let us move on to other types of earrings that have different types of closures. Lever back. Lever back is a style of earring where the back wire is safe and secure in the sort of a lever. Lever back earrings can be long or short. But the most preferred styles are like this, where the focal is just below your lobule. This particular earring right here is not just a clip-on. It is also a hinged earring. Here, the hinge is actually the press-on. So both are combined together in a form of complex earrings that hold on to your ears. You can see that they also slightly turn so that the form can be fixed on your ears even more securely. The other type of hinged earring is a huggy. While this is not your standard huggy, you can see that this earring, which is almost like a hoop, has a hinge right here. So when worn, it closes right back. There is no separate closure in this kind of a earring, but the earring itself rather acts as the focal. You might wonder how I could talk about earrings and not describe tassel earrings. Well, you have them now. Tassel earrings are those earrings where tassels can be attached to the stud or can be worn as is. It creates a very chic and elegant look. From silk thread tassels to bead to even fabric tassels, there are many versions that are available in the market. I would like to show you two of my price positions. The first one right here made up of bead tassels are my silk cocoon earrings. And the second one that you see here is a pair of fabric earrings where the tassel is created by folding bits of velvet fabric. Both lend a very royal look when worn. Cut. So far, we've looked at the wondrous world of jewellery in terms of hair accessories and accessories worn on the face like nose strings and earrings. I'm sure that the next time you are at a store looking for that perfect pair of earrings to wear or that headdress that you want to DIY, you would remember some of the concepts that we have discussed in this module. But now, 
I would like to ask you if you would like to create something beautiful for yourself and your loved ones using simple techniques. Yes, I'm going to be showing you a small demo on how to make two pairs of instant earrings using fashion trims that we have studied about in unit 2. So jewelry making is such an art that is both simple and complex at the same time. Jewelry designers and artists like me, we spend years trying to work on techniques to simplify them and to come up with variations. But that does not have to put a beginner off and using a very few techniques and simple trims, you can create fabulous pieces of jewelry for yourself. At this point, I'm going to link back to unit 2 of this unit where we studied fashion trims. So now, taking a cue from that, I'm going to show you how to make some fabulous earrings using buttons. Yes, one of the very interesting trims that we have studied in unit 2 as a closure trim. This is the simplest project that you can ever do. Find buttons that you absolutely love and then stud backs. Now, these can be glued on to your buttons using a fast acting adhesive like quick fix. If you do not have a glue like E6000 or a fusion glue which will take about 3 to 4 hours to set. Now be careful when you are working with Fevi-Quick as it sets very very fast and it might just adhere to your fingers. You can also apply glue directly on the surface if you want to minimize your handling of the glue. While this is a quick and easy technique, remember that it is not a permanent finish and it will hold only for a couple of wears. But this is something that you can create and wear for a fun evening out in the town. Now, if you're like me and do not like using glue in your jewelry, then I'm going to be showing you how to make this fabulous earring without use of any glue. What are the materials that you would require? Yes, an interesting button, some leather ribbon or fabric ribbon that is used as a decorative trim, a couple of jump rings, a ribbon crimp that matches with your ribbon, a ear hook and yes a pair of trusty chain nose pliers. You can get jewellery pliers such as this in most hobby shops. To begin with we will attach the button. To begin with we will attach the button to the ear hook using jump rings. Now look at the right way to open and close the jump ring. Do not pull it to the side but twist to open. Be careful that you are adding the hook on the right side. At this point I would also like you to attach the ribbon crimp to it. Now while the ribbon can be attached to the crimp and later attached to the button. This makes it easier because you do not have to apply any glue at this point to hold the ribbon in place. Now fold the leather ribbon or the leather lace in half, hold it in place, slide the ribbon crimp on until the teeth grab onto the surface. At this point, use your pliers and press. Press firm until you can see 
that the teeth of the ribbon crimp have sunk into the leather firmly holding it in place and once you repeat the same steps for your other pair your beautiful button and leather lace earrings are done conclusion with this we come to the end of this module however this is just the beginning of our ornament journey in this module we looked at jewelry that is worn on the head hair and the face from complex central asian headdresses to the talasaman that is worn in india we traveled a fascinating journey to understand how local influences create differences in colors shapes forms and materials that are used in manufacturing jewelry we also looked at different styles of nose piercings and the jewelry that is worn in them while nose piercing is one of the oldest body modification techniques that is followed in the world ear piercing comes a close second we looked at different earring styles that make up the vocabulary of earring designers around the world just as we studied traditional indian nose rings like mukutti bullak and besri we also looked at some traditional indian earrings like jhumka karnaful tandatti and butte i hope that this would have given you an exciting introduction to the world of jewelry in the final section of this module i also introduce you to the concept of making your own jewelry using the fashion trims that we studied in the unit 2 of this course i hope that you would take this further and develop more such techniques